Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the inn. Uh, as of right now, we have just actually finished watching a stream reveal, and we're pretty much going to go over... I don't think we're going to go over many of the cards they got, but we're going to pretty much kind of catch up and go over the the, card, the cards that have been revealed since our last video. And we're going to start off with Frost Lich Jaina. The reason we're starting off with this, even though it was the last card of the reveal that we just watched, is that um, this card was actually kind of leaked, and so we were just waiting for confirmation before we talked about it. And now that we actually have that confirmation from Blizzard, and we have the hero power, yeah, let's let's talk about this sucker. So Frost Lich Jaina is the mage death, uh, death knight hero. Uh, it's a nine cost hero uh, that with the battle cry summon a three six water elemental your elementals have life still for the rest of the game it has uh, five armor as well and its hero power is it's frost touch you tap deal one and if he kills a minion you summon a water elemental yeah well, I didn't have the exact name and everything down here that's the problem they don't even have it, have it listed <laughs> so it's all good, man. I got it. Yeah, um, I mean, I could tell them the effect. I just couldn't tell them the name. But yeah, and this is really cool because that means you don't use, lose the utility of uh, Jaina's original hero power. It's still doing the same thing. It just if you kill something with it, you get a water elemental. And keep in mind, water elementals freeze whatever they attack. So you can use this to control the board, and you get life back. So. Previously, we were concerned about this card because, yeah, you got a water elemental and your elementals have lifesteal, but how good is it, you know? And it's pretty good, actually. Uh, this, is a good, this is a good way for you to control the board and get life back. So, yeah, this is, this is not bad, especially if you are playing an elemental deck. This could be even more powerful. The fact that you can essentially set things up to actually spawn more elementals... I mean, this is kind of neat. Uh, and Mage can definitely last long enough to get the hero power out. My only, I think my only concern is that if you are being pressured on board already, I'm not sure if Frost Lynch Jaina is the play. Because it's a 9-cost card. It's a late-game card to help you set up as a finisher. But if your opponent pressures you to, to put you in a position where you can't play, put, put you in a position, you might not be able to play it. You might have to make other moves. And other choices, but it's it's not as bad as we were originally thinking it might be. Um, again, this is going to have to depend on how you build the rest of your deck, and I'm not going to say it's going to be a must-have. Especially if you're, I think if you're going to be playing a, playing an elemental deck, you might want to consider putting Frostland Jane in there because hero power-wise, you're losing nothing. Uh, you're going to be gaining five armor. You're going to be gaining a three-six elemental on the field. And those elementals that you have, hopefully on the field at that point, can get you life back. So, yeah, it's not bad. I, I kind of like it a little bit. Uh, we'll just have to wait to see if it can stick around and if it can be useful in this meta, in, in the new meta. It's that puzzle aspect that I'm going to have fun with when it comes to Frost Lich Jaina. Also, I was wrong. It's not Frost Touch. It's Icy Touch. But, same... Same difference, in a sense. Um, to her, though. This, like, just from the cards I've seen from this expansion, this expansion is a very control-heavy expansion, and I love it. To start off. Uh, secondly, with her effect, giving all the rest of my elementals life steal for the rest of the game. That makes me want to go like right now and just go ahead and just say screw it and craft Pyros because with Pyros being in my deck, yeah, sure, it's just going to be like, okay, early game, oh, it's dead. Mid game, oh, it's dead. Late game, boop, here he is. Big old 10-10 on board. Big and scary and gives me a lot of life. And gives me life steal back. So it's just like, yes, I like this idea. But it's just more or less with with Mage, we're going to have to look at it in this way of this control board aspect, or at least controlling aspect at this point. I mean, right now with Angoro, it's been very secret and burn heavy. So it's just like to have to potentially transition and shift. Good. 
But it's just at the same time, it's just, ooh, how is this metagame going to shift out now? Because it's just there's so much stuff. Oh, I, I still need to see the rest of the cards. I still need to see the rest of the Death Knights. And it's just like, okay. Okay, just take a minute, step back, breathe, and then we go from there. Are we definitively good hey, on Frost Lich? Can we just say how I like the, 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 new, the new icon specifically for Life Touch? It's like this, this heart. Actually, it's like mm -hmm. a broken heart. Um, so, I mean, that, that changes a lot of things. And that's, that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. All right, next up on the board, we have Ghastly Conjurer. She's a four-cost, two-six, a mage-exclusive rare. With a battle cry, add a mirror image spell to your hand. I dig this card. Free, one-cost, give me two, zero, two taunts? Sure, I'll take that. I'm mainly looking down the scope a little bit. Because I'm looking at this going, oh, quest mage, my quest mage, because it's just like, this is another one of those things where you can just add it as a tool. As well as, you know, just like having it for that arch mage finish. Because it's just, you, you drop your sorcerer's apprentice, copy, 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 get your clock thing to go off, drop the arch mage, and then fireballs for days. So... I like it. I'm not saying that it's going to be one of those like meta-defining cards or anything like that, but it's you're going to have to find your niche for it and find your use for it. And if anything, like that's what this is going to be at this point. So, Bob, I'm going to throw this one over to you. Yeah, um, this is essentially a combo enabler. It has a nice body. It can just be played on four, so it's going to be it can be a tempo play, and it get it can get you a mirror image spell that you're essentially going to be used either. Uh, as last last ditch effort to protect yourself, or more than likely to proc some other combo, whether it's for quest, whether it's for antithetitis, whether it's for your mana worms, whatever you're trying to proc, mirror image procs it. So I mean, it's it's pretty much a combo enabler, and it's not a bad minion to just play on for for, for tempo. So you know, there you go. Well, next up we have leeching poison which is a two-cost rogue spell that gives your weapon lifesteal. I kind of like this. And the reason I kind of like this is one of the big complaints from rogue players are that they don't have class-specific... Uh, they, don't, they, ha they don't have... Rogue just doesn't have uh, life gain. Rogue, rogue does not have healing. Uh, there, there are a few neutral minions, but a lot of the times that just doesn't get the job done as effectively as other classes can, or as minions in the past have done. And Leeching Poison allows you to get a little bit of life back. True, if you're just using Hero Power, this probably isn't work worth it. You're probably going to need to put this on a bigger weapon, or get your weapon to be bigger before using Leeching Poison. But I think if you are a in a deck that's able to do this, uh, this might not be a bad way to get life back, especially maybe in a more aggro-focused rogue, or depending on what you're doing. Um... A lot of people are comparing this to Envenom Weapon, and the problem with that comparison is Envenom Weapon, uh, would, with where how you want to use Envenom Weapon, you, you'd want to hit a bigger thing than just outright kill it, and that's tanking a lot of damage. That's why Envenom Weapon really wasn't effective, because you were tanking a lot of da damage in order to use it properly. Leeching Poison, you really don't have to tank a damage if you don't want to. This is just a way for you get to, to get health. And in fact, if you can get a big enough weapon and you don't want to tank the damage, then don't take, tank the damage. But on some of these decent rogue weapons, in fact, with a lot of the rogue weapons, they can be just as effective as something like uh, Paladin's uh, true, uh, 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 true Silver. Um, so, and... Unlike that one, which just give you gain two life, you're gaining life equal to, equal to the attack. So, I think in the right deck, this could be the healing that Rogue is act, asking for. But this is not going to go in every Rogue deck, and you're just not going to use this to tank damage, guys. This is not a Venom weapon. It's being used in a different way, and in the right Rogue deck, I think this is ex extremely powerful. 
as far as like just trying to like look down the scope again, I don't see Rogue using this. I realistically don't because it's just like yes, there are many applications where it can be used, but it's just. You're having to find a spot for it in your two slot. And it's just like, there's already other cards that you're going to want to fill in those slots. So it's just not for me. I'm going to just leave it at what Bob went with and just move well, on. Well, think about how many rogues currently run actual weapons. Besides the hero power. Zero. Zero, which means you're not going to use it. If you are a rogue that is using other weapons, or are using ways to really buff up your hero power weapon, then yeah, you might want to use this. Yeah. But then again, it depends on what your game plan is. It really does. However, continuing on, we have Syndragosa. She's the mage legendary for this set. And it's an 8 cost 8-8 eight, eight with Battlecry, summon 2 zero run Frozen Champions, which the zero one Frozen Champions have the Death Rattle get a random legendary minion to your hand. <sighs> Mage, you call to me again. Just... Just... just Come here, Cindergosa. We're, we're gonna build Dragon, Dragon Mage, and we're just gonna go crazy with it because the Dragon Mage meta is coming, and you cannot stop it. <laughs> but realistically, though, if anything, she's really good. Like, if especially if you want to try to build this value mage game, you're gonna you're gonna drop Cindergosa in. I mean, just ah, oh, ah, oh, I want it. Bulb. Talk me down. I like it, but why did it have to be a mage legendary? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this and going, I like you, but I don't want to play you in mage. I Maybe mean, I can figure a way to play you in mage, but I don't want to play you in mage. I want to play you in other classes. Why do you have to be a mage legendary? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a nice effect, but is it what Mage wants to do? I'm not sure that it is, to be completely honest with you. Um, if it was neutral, I think that it would ha find it would find a better home. And if it was Priest, oh my word, it would find a lot of homes. But <laughs> in Mage, it's it's like one of those things like, you like, this is an awesome legendary, let's put it in the class that really doesn't need it. I just... It makes me sad. And sure, I can possibly find a way to get it in um, in my Priest Legendary deck or in, in other decks. But you know, but by that point, it's not going to have the effect that I want to have, and it just makes me sad. I just... I, I guess that's where I am. It's like going, I like the card, just not where it's at. And that's why I think where it's at might mean it might not get played as much as we want it to. Dragon Mage. Dragon Mage. <laughs> anyway, next up we have Bring It On, which is a two-cost warrior spell that that allows that says gain 10 armor, but reduce the cost of minions in your opponent's hand by two. Um. Okay. I'm... I'm not sure whether Warrior will play this or not. Because, on the one hand, 10 armor for 2 is really, really nice. And especially if you're playing a control variant, um, or even maybe an aggro variant, that might not be bad. But, if you're trying to, con if you're a control warrior trying to control your opponent's board, um... Reducing the cost of their minions is bad. I mean, maybe you're 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 playing this so that they can overextend them brawl. But depending on what your opponent's playing, uh, this might backfire on you. So I, I this is this is a weird give and take card that I'm not sure if it's going to be played or not. On one hand, I think it might. I think there's a very good chance of it being. But on the other hand, I'm thinking that the downside 
might be too great that it might out, outweigh any considerations from Control Warrior or any warrior in general that wants tin armor, because that downside, man. I mean, there, there's there's a reason that if if Emperor Thrusian hits the field and and this was in Wild or back in Standard, that even Control Warrior is finding a way to kill it right now. Imagine that, essentially, that same Control Warrior goes. Yeah, we need to kill that Emperor Thrusian uh, before it, uh, and it continues to, d to discount. It's discount once, but we're gonna have, we have to kill it right now. And then turns around and says, "Hey, let's discount this th discount the minions by two Thrusians. Go!" Uh, so y I I'm getting, uh, Eddie. I think this card is really, really good. To be perfectly honest. Like, you you don't you don't given, mind giving them a two two through scene discount. Here's the thing, okay. Because, like right now, if I if I just go based on the meta right now, this card is amazing, because it's just my opponent's gonna vomit their hand, and then me over here as warrior, I'm just gonna see here, and I gain twenty armor, run you out of resources, dead. And I just sit here and just go, yay! I won the game because I had like 20 life. Because you ran, you decided to run all your resources out. You're gonna run both of them at the. You're gonna play both of them at the same time. Because screw it. <laughs> both of them at the same time. I will make everything in your hand free. I make everything in your hand free after you've already emptied it. After it's already empty, you get nothing. In return, that's where Bring It On has its strengths. Now, since I'm not exactly w able to completely look down the scope, I can look down the scope and go, "Okay, Bring It On might not be used because of the I'm reducing my opponent's minions in their hand by two." And you're looking at it from the point of view of aggro. Oh, they, yeah. they don't have anything in their hands anyway, so it's not going to hurt me. What if you're... This is, this is especially a, a set that looks to be more control-heavy, more mid-range-heavy. So what you're doing is, if you're going up against other control or mid-range, you're in trouble. You Which just gave them ready to get to. huge di discounts. Which is what I was just getting ready to get to until you decided to go and stop me. This is but a discussion, yeah. dude. I know, I know. I was getting to that part, which is where I'm going, okay, with Bring It On. Now you're looking down this mid-range, potentially, control scope. And it's just like, okay, Bring It On might not see play because of that. Especially, you know, oh, I'm just giving my opponent a three-mana Lyra. Ew, that's disgusting to think about. Or if you... Or like any, and use both of them at the same time. You just gave them a one mana Lyra. Again, I'm looking at that from a point of aggro. Of just like, hey, whoosh, I'm to the ceiling on this. You're not realistically gonna play this going up against something like priest because priest right now isn't aggro. So I mean, I give myself a little bit of credit there to be able to at least specify. So. Yeah, Bring It On's one of those cards where I'm just like, it's really going to have to be how the meta shapes. Like, if we're going to begin, like, if we're going into that control mid-range, this may do well against Freeze Mage, and just, you know, make it to where, with some of the other stuff that was also revealed during the stream, Bring It On just being able to just, like, revamp and just gain armor out of the ceiling, just who knows? I need to see more of this set, and plus to see how the metagame shapes out. Before. Just okay. I'm gonna go ahead. If anything, gears to cold race. Three cost, three four mage common. Battle cry. If an enemy is frozen today, <laughs> draw a card. Ah, 
good night, Irene. Mage, why is it that with this set right now, you're getting three costs? Your three cost slot is so contested with so many things. Like, we've got secrets that are just being, just three cost, and then you've got, like, Aculite if you want to run Aculite. Now you got Cold Wraith, you got a new Apprentice thing that's going to be talked about later on, and it's just so many three costs. I mean, for me, in Arena, this might see a home because it's a really good tempo play, but it's just like, you have to freeze them in to be able to benefit on its draw card. And you already can draw two from Arcane Intellect. I just... I, I don't see the right home for this. Bulk, well, can you change my mind on this? Tempo, tempo. Um, I think, in, depending on the mage deck, this might find a home for its card draw. Um, especially in freeze-focused uh, mage combo decks that, that's going to be using freeze effects, this might be a, a good thing to place on the board. Get card draw. If, if you're not able to uh, to do Doomsayer, you might as well get a, get a card. But there has been pointed out you might want to run Acoly Acoly anyway because it might be a better draw, draw engine. But Cold Wraith also kind of gives you tempo. It's the Vile Spine Slayer issue. You know, you hey, you already have a five. You already have a card that essentially, mana wise, costs less to do the same deal. Why play Vile Spine? Well, because Vile Spine does the job. Yes, it costs a little bit more, but it also puts a minion on the board. Well, why run this when you have Arcane Intellect or um, or even uh, your uh, or even your Acolyte of Pain? Uh, because, you know, minion on the, you, you can have the card draw engine, but it's mainly to put a 3-4 on the board, to contest the board. So, again, here's also another issue. The mage decks that are running a lot of the freeze effects are mainly combo focused, which means, okay, they don't really don't care if they have a 3-4 on the board. So, now we have run into another problem. So, now I'm kind of seeing that there might not be a home for it, because it needs to be in a tempo freeze deck. And if you don't have a Tempo Freeze deck, which most decks with Freeze aren't Tempo, then this really doesn't have a, have a much much place in the board, because you're right, there are better three-cost cards. And I just talked myself out of it. <laughs> I mean, I granted, I wasn't planning on put this, putting this in any deck, but I was just saying, there's a possibility, and now I'm like talking about it and just going, no, actually, wait a minute. Combo cards don't Combo decks don't care about tempo. They care about control to pro pull off their combo. Which means you don't want this. Yeah, I mean, if anything, like, if you really take a look at maybe... Maybe, you're like, look at this in Wild perspective, Bob, because I know you love Wild. Yes. So it's just, like, think about it in that mindset and, like, where that arena would sit. Because in that arena, you have your Ice Lamp to be able to make this thing useful and viable. Well, n but here's the thing. I was even thinking about Freeze Mage. I was thinking about the, not only the one in Standard, but the one in Wild. And there's a reason that that Freeze Mage runs Acolyte. They can just ping it, try to get the cards. Um, the, the whole point of that in particular is you need to first set up a Freeze Effect, and then you, uh, that allows you to put it out as a tempo play and draw a card. Um, and basically have a body on board. But the thing is with Freeze Mage... You don't care about having the body on board, because the whole idea is to combo up and just go, BOOM! you dead! The point of Freeze Mage is to stall, not to have bodies on board, necessarily. So even in classic Freeze Mage and Wild, you would rather have the Acolyte than this card. Because the Acolyte you can get multiple draws off of, find your combo pieces, freeze to stall, put out your Doomsayers, and there you go. You're already, uh, you're already, uh committing at least five mana for the for the doomsayer there's no way you're gonna be you're gonna be using this as well with your freeze effects with your frost novas with your blizzards there's there's no there's no way because you would rather have the acolyte ping it with ping it get 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 the stuff use the acolyte maybe to get other lowly stuff off but when you really think about how these combo decks that use freeze and mage want to work whether it's your classic freeze mage whether it's uh quest mage whatever it is 
they don't want this because they are really focused on stalling uh, having a reliable card draw engine and just getting to their uh, combo pieces faster so they can just blow you out of the water. And there we go. Yeah. And I, because believe me, Eddie, I was on board that train and then I just started talking it through and I went, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. So next up, we have Voodoo Hexer, which is a 5 cost, 2 7 shaman minion with taunt that freeze, that has the effect freeze any character damaged by this minion. I really like this card. Uh, yes, it's a shaman. Shaman has more control tools, more taunts. Yes. But this also gives a freeze enabler for something like Ice Break Breaker. But even more important than that, the, the stats are about right. It has this, the stat line of something like Armor Alley Smith, and we know that that card is a pretty good 5 cost taunt minion. So, this one, by comparison, is actually pretty good as well. It enables, enables your Icebreaker and enables a lot of other effects that Shaman is kind of getting. And I don't, I don't like the, the, the idea of, oh, it's just a weaker Armor Alley Smith. I'm not comparing its effect. The effects are different. The idea is that, that for a class-specific top minion, in the 5 cost, sl cost slot, with an effect, 2-7 is a good stat line, as we've seen from Ally Armorsmith. And Ally Armorsmith gets a lot of play, and Voodoo Hexer will get a lot of play, because essentially it's doing what you want a top minion to do anyway. It's protecting your face, and it's stalling them out. So, yeah, I like this card. This is a really cool card. Uh, we're going to see a lot of it. I th it might be meta-defining. First of all, I have to take a step back and go Icebreaker. Uh, I'm sorry I called you useless, because the day after I review you, this gets announced. And I said the text of all this is I saw it, and like freaking Shaman releasing the, that freeze card the next day after the review of Icebreaker, Cries in Corner, as soon as I saw it, because it's just like, uh, Eddie. I wish I would have had this. Can we also just appreciate the fact that I, I thought that we would get, like... Because we're going to get into this later, but I, you know, I thought we'd just have a sprinkling of like one, of two, one or two more freeze cards that they wouldn't have a significant effect on Shaman. And can I just say that at least they decided to go all in on this. We're going to be talking about this, and this is great. But that just makes yeah. the Icebreaker... And I think we even talked about Icebreaker is we couldn't evaluate it because we had no idea what we were looking at. They put it out at the worst possible time to do any evaluation. Yeah, and it's just like... Because, like, right then and there, because, like, when you put it out early, it's just like... When you think about it, it's like, this card is kind of garbage right now when you think about it. And then now you get to look at the grander scope of things, and it's just like... Holy uh, crap! If anything... I'm going to I'm going to be the guy that steps up and says it. This is going to be a meta definer because number 1, it's a 5 cost 27. It does have the stats of the Alley Armor Smith. Number 2, it has taunt. Guess what gets stronger now because of it having taunt. Good old Stonehill Defender. And he wants you out of his jungle, and you're going to be able to discover this card off of it. Here's the thing, Stonehill Defender was already strong in Shaman. Yeah, and now you've got another card that just adds to it, to just make it even stronger. And so it's just like, which one do I want to take? Do I want to take the White Eyes? Do I want to take the thing from below, which, hey, at the beginning of next year, those two are going to rotate out, and then leaves this. So this thing is going to be a meta-defining card for at least two years to come. Also, don't forget Hot Spring Guardian and yeah. um, your little, your, what is it? What's the name of the elemental? Uh, it's Earth Elemental. Earth Elemental! The big freaking taunt! I mean, Shaman has all the taunts, all the, has a lot of really good taunts. Anyway, if you're real, if you're building a deck that's synergizing and focusing on those, those, those taunt minions, you're going to be running, um, Stonehill Defender, and now Voodoo Hex, we now have Voodoo Hexer. So, I mean, there's already a lot of good targets. I'll be in the so, corner now. <laughs> so, many target. Ah, yeah, Voodoo Hexer, going to be a meta-defining card coming up. Next card on the list, we have Bear Shark, 
or if anything, when it comes to the uh, meme chat that I'm a part of, but shark. <laughs> it's a three cost four three. Cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers. Of course, it's a beast. It's a hunter exclusive. Oh, if you can tempo this thing out and then smack the Houndmaster on top of it, this thing is disgusting. Granted, yes, you can cook it with the mage uh, Medivh's Valet, but other than that, you're going to have to use Boar to be able to get rid of this thing, and it's just, ah, oh, this thing is... This is nice. If we're going to go into the potential tempo, mid-range style for Hunter, this is a nice addition to it. Well, it's a bear, it's a shark, it's a bear shark. Remember, shark is super stereo. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's scary. It's scary, but nice. It's it's a, it, like, it costs one less, it has the same stat line of a Paladin Shredder, but that makes sense because it's a Hunter class exclusive. That can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. And even if it could could be targeted by spells or hero powers, it could not be targeted by priest. So <laughs> But um yeah, it's 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 scary. Um I think we'll see it because it's big and it's scary and it's cheap, so yeah. So next up we have Hadronox, which is a nine cost. 3-7 Druid Legendary, which is a beast with the Death Rattle, summon your top minions that died this game. <sighs> kind of a little split on this, because number one, Druid has some very good top minions. Just going to say it. They have some really strong top minions. And uh, th th there's just some synergy with some stuff that we're going to see later on. But my problem, Eddie, is that aside for, like, the really super strong um, um, Tom Indians, like their Treant, um, most of Druid's Tom Indians are, are, end up being... What's the word? Um, they are conditional. Which huh? means you have to select taunt. And the problem being is that Hadronox has a death rattle that's very similar to Nazoth's battle cry. And if you remember, Nazoth only resummoned minions that naturally had death rattle. Which means that Hadronox is going to only resummon minions that naturally had taunt. And when you think about that in Warrior and not Warrior and Druid, that's actually not as many minions as you think. There's a card later on that really synergizes with it, but if you really want Hadronox to pu be pulled off at the best of its ability, you're gonna need some very specific taunts, and that just they're just taunts that Druid just doesn't have. So I think this is a minion with potential. But with how Druid tends to be built as a class with their minions and with Taunt, they're not going to come back. And that could be problematic. Oh, yeah. If anything, like, as far as the standard side of things goes, I don't think this really finds a home in really anything. Because it's just... It's just so conditional and just wonky, and you've got to figure out how to be able to make it work. Like, I can see Curator yanking it out of your deck, and then you just kind of go in and having fun with it. But really, I'm just like, Ugh. wild though. Man, just double belcher, and just some of the taunts you have in wild. Yeah. But the thing that is, makes this work. It's just so nice. The thing is that it's the same problems because I wasn't I wasn't talking about neutral neutral taunts. If you want to put neutral taunts in, that's fine. But if you're making a taunt druid, no matter whether you're in wild or standard, you have to keep in mind if you're using Hadronox, 
that you are relying mostly on neutral minions because Druid just doesn't have them. Yeah, like, oh, that's a nice Cthulhu one that we have over here, but really it's situational for Cthulhu. Yeah, well, so, I mean, even yeah. if you gave Cthulhu Taunt, Cthulhu's not going to come back for, with Hydronox because Cthulhu never started with Taunt. Um, Ancient of... It's like, oh, you, you had an Ancient of Lore. That's nice. It's not coming back because you had to choose to have Taunt. You know, even if you had Taunt when it died... It doesn't naturally have Taunt. And that goes for every single one of Druid's Choose One minions. They don't naturally have Taunt, which means they don't come back from Hadronox. You know, I'm hoping, if anything, like with Hadronox, that we're really wrong on it, and someone finds some unique, sort of bonkers way to make it work. But like I said, again, it will kind of rely on neutral, neutral, neutral minions, and that's fine. But keep that in mind. The reason why uh, Taunt Warrior ended up getting a lot of synergy is Taunt Warrior in general. Taunt Warrior in general has some very good Taunt minions, so it makes it makes it better. Druid right now just doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, and I think I, I like the idea of Hadronox, but I have to be honest that Druid does not have the class the class minions at the moment to really support this. They they're really gonna have to rely. It's really going to have to rely heavily on neutrals, and that's fine. I've, I've built decks that rely heavily on neutrals anyway. But you're going to have to keep that in mind when you're building the deck. Mm -hmm. So if anything, next up, we have the Abominable Bowman. He's a 7 cost, 6 7, Hunter exclusive, Death Rattle. Summon a random friendly beast that died this game. Uh, all right, so on one end, we're pushing the Nazoth Hunter again, which is fine. I'm cool with that. On the other end, I'm looking at this, and I'm going, okay, Hunter Identity really is... That's currently right now. Things could change, things could, things could shift to make it different. Being able to potentially get my Savannah Hymane again because of him, I could dig it with, you know, turn six Hymane, if it dies or if it doesn't die, Abominable Bowman, and just having that tempo on board. But it's just like, if you're running low-end, low low-cost beasties to go along with the Abominable Bowman, your pool's going to get diluted really fast. So it's just like, what do we do? Do we cut the early game beasties to be able to make it to where we can make him viable, or do we just shift and turn things around to where it's just like, okay, we're not going to focus on him, we're just going to keep focusing on what we focused on this whole time. So, well, maybe you can throw me a bone on this one and maybe throw an idea in my head that'll, like, make it pinball harder. Um, mid-range beast, uh, hunter might want to consider using him, but that doesn't really tend to be a thing that really lasts super hard on hunter. It's something that can work, but it's very hard. And we're looking at the kind of, kind of, the kind of deck that, that might consider running Dinomancy just to buff a beast. But again, that's kind of stretch, and we don't see a lot of those decks being played because it's a lot easier for Hunter to rush things down and be a more aggro style. Um, also, if you happen to be playing Death Stalker Rexar for some reason, um, those zombies, man, they can come back. They can get resurrected by the Abominable Bowman. But the thing is, the Abominable Bowman, again, kind of costs a lot, and th that means the Death Stalker Rexar deck is going to be very much a late game deck, which is very much against the comfort zone of uh, of uh, Hunter. We were talking earlier with with, with Frostlands Jaina. It might not work. It, it 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 might not work, but it might work because J Mage in general can actually last a late game and can kind of control the board. And so this could be a comeback mechanic. With Hunter, the we talked we talked that the Death Knight actually goes completely contrary 
to how Hunter plays, and that's problematic. And the same thing with Abominable, Abominable Bowman. It has to be in a deck where um, it's going to get a lot of use. And in your major, mid-range Hunter, that's questionable because you have better options for your late-game finishers. For um, Deathstalker Rexar, it could be useful, but again, Deathstalker Rexar in general doesn't work. I am working on, however, I am working on one idea uh, for a deck I actually play in Wild, uh, and I'm knocking around the idea of maybe putting a copy of Abominable Bowman, and that's in my copy, uh, that's in my web, my web hunter deck, which pretty much, if you don't know anything about my web hunter deck, it's a hunter deck that focuses on random beast synergy. Um, so I have a bunch of things that, like, generate, uh, that generate random beasts in my hand on the field, and, um, that actually can make, that can make said beast stronger and very scary for my opponent. Uh, and this could be another way just to get some of those back. So, I might try experimenting with it there, but even though I'm kind of going, I, does it fit? It might be too late game. So, we'll, we'll see. This is a very niche card. I just don't think that the standard hunter deck, and most hunter decks, are going to want to play them. So next up, we have Fate Spinner, which is a 5-cost Druid minion, 5-cost uh, 5-3 five, Druid minion with, that allows you to choose your death rattle, and you do this in secret. You at Pretty much when you summon him, you either choose the death rattle to, to deal 3 damage to all minions, or to give all minions plus 2, plus 2. Um... This is an interesting card. I mean, and I can't say whether it will see play or not, because this is really interesting. Because this either means this is a really cool AoE uh, card to to wipe out your opponent's board, or you buff up all the minions, which in that case you might want to eliminate your opponent's board and then buff them up. And I guess this depends on what deck you're playing and what deck you're playing against. Does this find a home in Aggro Druid? I don't think it does. I mean, maybe if it does, if you want to just uh, buff everything at plus two, plus two, but if you're having problems with things on your opponent's board, that might be asking a lot, and three damage is likely to eliminate your entire board. But maybe in something like Big Druid, funny enough, this might find a home. You can, uh, you can easily maybe wipe out everything on your opponent's board if it's like aggro or mid-range or whatever you can set up with um your bigger your bigger with the bigger minions on your field and then use three da three, three damage to wipe them all out and since you're playing big druid the big things can kind of stay on the field and be alive and now you know you, your opponent doesn't have a field but you do and it's big and it's scary or you decide to buff everything up but before you do you you, you kind of eliminate some things on your opponent's field then buff er then then eliminate buff everything up and send them face. I mean, I think that in more of a mid range late game ramp druid, face spinner might actually be good. But in in aggro, I'm not sure if this is good. Even though it has a plus two plus two modifier, because I think something like scenarios might be better, or any of the other cards that buff your min minions. But this is not a, a card I really can see being being played a lot. Part of me really thinks this might be a niche card. But it might be a sleeper, super powerful niche card. I guess we're just going to have to see. But, I mean, it has potential. This card, if anything, is going to be dependent on the metagame. Straight up, straight out. Because, you take a look at what this is. It's a 5 cost, 5-3. Five, so, it's already in that slot of, okay, this is the five slot, depending on what style of deck I'm running, eh, it could work. However, if the metagame shapes up to still be aggro, 99% of the time, you're playing and choosing the deal three damage to all minions. 99.9% .9 of the time, that's what you're going to do. Now, there is the fun mind game part of potentially faking your opponent out and doing the whole give them 2-2 two, two, and then like, alright, I'm going to start token generating now, dupe, 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 and then kill the fate spinner and then 
go face. So it's just like, you are right, this is a very niche card, and it's just, it, I honestly think it's meta-dependent right now, because it's just, you got to see where things land. And this could be one of those sleeper meta-definers. That's where I'm going to put it, sleeper meta-definer. But as of right now, <sighs> if I had to go current metagame state, I mean, this being a board cooker, I love it. So, like, your your token shaman's just dead. And then it's just... Pirate Warrior, you're more than likely dead because it's turn five, you've already taken about 20 damage. And it's just like, okay, well, bottom right, this isn't going to be any use to me. <laughs> But are we good on Fate Spinner? Yes. All right. Next up, we got Bolivar Fireblood. He's the Paladin Legendary for the set. He's a five cost, one seven Divine Shield. After a friendly minion loses Divine Shield, gain two attack. All right. So, Bolivar, I'm looking at you and I'm going, all right. Wild's probably where your home's gonna be. Because dude it in in wild and then just making it to where a lot of minions on the board have divine shield is uh, this card is just so hard for me to discuss because it's just like you have to have divine shield in mind when you're building the deck or at least something to be able to generate you divine shield. Yeah, sure, you can potentially go mid-range Murlocs because of Gentle Megasaur giving them all Divine Shield, and oh, hey, looky there, Bolivar's already on board, and then this, and then just let's just boof it out of thinking, uh, just make it go stronger and just bleh. I... <sighs> I cannot realistically just see it. Like, yeah, sure, it's a good like it's a good tempo play, turn five, play it, and then you go, turn six, give it uh Spike Ridge Steed. But it's just this card. Bob, is there any way like you can you can convince me that this actually has a home in like standard? Because like wild I can see where it can be really good. In standard I just can't. There are a lot of Divine Shield procers and Divine Shield minions for Paladin, even in Standard. Um, I'm actually kind of debating on this as well. I think there was a big debate, actually, in, uh, in our meme chat about, you know, whether this, uh, this, this, this effect is procced uh, always or just when it's on the field. Uh, it's something that I think maybe there should be some sort of confirmation but we also need to be realistically realistic um, that if it if it doesn't uh, specify most of the time, especially with an effect like this, I think this is only procced when it's on the field. It makes sense because otherwise it, it could be stupid uh, if you're running to find shield specific deck um, because it, it it could get out of control real quickly. So it's more than likely when, only when it's on the field. That being said, guys, um, it has Divine Shield, so they break the Divine Shield, it's going to get buffed itself. Because it, it doesn't say another friendly minion, it says a friendly minion. It includes itself. Um, not only that, do you know how many uh, Divine Shield taunts Paladin has access to right now? Couldn't tell you the exact count. Uh, let's, there's Tyrion. There is Wicker Flame Burn Bristle. If you want to pull in the stuff, in, and we're just going to do standard. If you want to pull in the stuff from uh, from neutral, you can run some uh, Psychotrons. Uh, let's not. Uh, let's even talk about uh, Grimstream Defender, who who basically gives uh, who basically has taunt himself and gives things right by him Divine Shield. Uh, the fact that right now they have uh, you have ways to give your one ones Divine Shield. The fact that you also have a one-mana spell that gives a minion Divine Shield, 
And, um, oh yeah, there's that two cost. Uh, what's his name? I think it's like Argent something, whatever. But he can give things Divine Shield. If you really put your mind to it, oh, oh yeah, oh wait, and, uh, there's also that, uh, uh, there's also that Jester or whatever it is. Divine, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, one cost Death Rattle, it gives a friendly minion Divine Shield. If you really put your mind to it, you can build a Divine Shield deck in Standard. Now, I tried this uh, back after the first rotation. It really didn't work out as well. Uh, maybe with Bolvar and some of the other things that we've seen, there might be a way to actually proc this and make a really cool Divine Shield deck. And I'm I'm arguing about Bolvar and my Divine Shield deck in Wild. Uh, but it can be done, and there's a chance Bolvar might be scary if you know how to build the deck right. But I'm actually going to transition into the next card, which is Light Sorrow, which is a 4-cost 1-4 uh, Paladin weapon that says after friendly minion lose divine shield gain plus one attack. For me, I have to include these de- include these together because the same type of condition. And this is why I also think that Bolvar only gets it when they're on the field because I don't think that they would they would uh, they would uh, buff a weapon while it's while it's somewhere else like even in your deck for divine shield minions. I think you have to actually have to be holding it, which just means you have to figure out when you want to attack with the light light sorrow and all of that. Um. And I'm arguing that when the new expansion hits, do these deserve a place in my Divine Shield deck? Um, because especially if you build the deck right, it's very Divine Shield rich, and you have Divine Shield taunts just slowing people down, these could be great finishers. But they could probably also be very hard to proc, and may not get as high as you want. And that means you actually have to have the Bolvar out on a while. You might have to be holding Light Sorrow for a while. And in Wild, when you already have, um... When you already have something like Coghammer, and you already have, um, the other Divine Shield weapon that gives all your Divine Shield minions, I think it's like, plus one, plus one. Um, is it worth taking one of those out, or any of those out, or any of your other weapons out, for Light Sorrow... If it's just to basically let it sit in your hand, buff a while, hope it doesn't get removed, so you can hit things in the face. I, I think in a Divine Shield deck, I mean, maybe it, maybe in Standard, Light Sorrow might work, but I think in Wild, Light Sorrow just doesn't work, because you have better options when it comes to weapons, just in general. Because you already have two better Divine sh- uh, Shield-focused weapons that you can play in Wild anyway, and I would actually just recommend playing them in general in Wild. Uh, plus the fact that Tyrion is going to be getting you, uh, going to be getting you an Ashbringer, S- and it, and maybe you're even run- running True Silver. That's very tight to try to fit Light Sorrow in. Light Sorrow might find a place in uh, Standard, but then that means that your Divine Shield deck, uh, which you probably want to be running Divine Shield Taunt, has to be very almost aggro focused. And again. Is it worth playing light, playing light sorrow? I'm not sure. I don't think so. But Bolvar might be a different story. Bolvar can probably maybe get up to scary levels. Um, if you're running a divine shield deck in, in standard and you can get to work, yes, run Bolvar. In wild, I, I'm not sure. I'm actually thinking that over. I'm trying to figure out if Bolvar has a home in my divine shield deck or not, and I'm trying to figure out, figure things out, figure out what my options are, figure out how I want to play it and how I want to build that deck going forward. But Bolvar has more of a chance than Light Sorrow. So I think there is maybe a chance for Bolvar. I think that a deck probably can be built in Standard. And my thing is, whether Standard or Wild, I guess that's the question if you're making a, make, making a Divine Shield deck. Does Bolvar have a home? And if he does, you have to be building that deck very specifically so that you so that Bolvar is your in-game plan. And you need to be getting him out as soon as possible, keeping Divine Shield up, uh, keep things w- up with Divine Shield, have him lose it when he's on the field, and then hit face for massive damage. Yeah. I have to agree with you there. You kind of like taking all the points, and I'm just like, you know what? Here, I'll just let you have that with both of these cards, because it's just like, ugh, I can't get into this with that. <laughs> uh, do we have enough time for... We have time for one more. All right, the last one we get to focus on is Corpse Taker. She's a four-cost, three-three neutral battle cry. Gain taunt if your deck has a taunt minion. Repeat for Divine Shield, Life Steal, Wind Fury. 
Okay. For cost, just discard. Because I just have to stop and just go, holy cow. Because in Paladin, this thing is nuts. Because you have a Tyrion slash secondary Wicker Flame Burn Bristle that you can run two of. In Shaman, if you run this with Alec here, it gets everything but the lifesteal. For four. Granting, yes, the three three, but it's just you get it for four. And it's just Oh it's it's really nice. Like, I'm looking at it, I'm just going, you know what? I just might run you in Paladin and just make two of you, or just like draw two of you, depending on how things shape up. But it's just this this thing. Whew. Bob, I'm I'm liking it. Yeah, I'm I'm going to have to double check real quick with some other stuff in the decks before I, I, I decide whether I'm going to really want one or not. But there's a reason why I kind of want to include this near the end while we were talking about Bolvar and Light Sorrow. Because you were asking, can you build a Divine Shield deck in Standard? And my answer was, yes, you can. And if you do it in Standard, you need to have one. Now in Wild, I'm also keeping in mind, because if, you're, if you are building a Divine Shield deck, and by the way, Divine Shield needs to be basically used to kind of, you know, kind of protect, you can get rid of things, not die, and also just the fact that um, there's a lot of Divine Shield taunt stuff, which means if you're building your Divine Shield deck right, automatically Corpse Taker is going to have Divine Shield and taunt. And if you haven't drawn your Wicker Flame yet, it might also have Lifesteal. But it, at the very least, it is guaranteed Divine Shield and taunt. You know, and really, at this point, you don't care about the Wind Fury. You just want the Divine Shield taunt, possibly the Lifesteal. Uh, so, and, and Standard, for a Divine Shield deck, yes, this is going to be run. And Wild, I actually need to check my list before I say anything, Eddie. I think this might be run in my Wild deck. I just need to double-check and make sure it's not outclassed. But, yeah, it's not a bad card. I think this has potential. I think it possibly might slip under some people's radars. But I think that it's very strong in decks that are built heavily already with with maybe one or two of these in mind already. I think I think it's a, it's a lot more value if two it's built around at least two of these or has a lot with two of them or even three because then that gets it gets a lot more synergy. So in those decks, Corpse Taker is by far a must have. And I think Eddie, looking at all these in these last three cards we talked about, I think. Uh, very much that Divine Shield Paladin probably can be built in uh, standard. Uh, if so, you want Balvar, you want Corpse Taker, I would say leave out Light Sorrow. Uh, later on, we'll talk about some other Divine Shield minions. They are out there. We They have revealed them, and I think they're going to reveal more, and there are a lot of things right out there in standard that you might be forgetting are out there that are going to make your, your deck really good. But yeah, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be a, uh, a, a pretty good card, uh, and Balvar has, the, has that potential as well. And next time we get to start on a sneaky card that was snuck into the video that was shown. And I'm just like, no, I want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's, there'll, there'll be time. We'll, we'll talk. But anyway, uh, that's been us. We are going to... Uh, we're going to be talking, We're going to, probably since there's been a lot been, that's been released, and they're going to be releasing some more over the next couple of weeks, uh, ne within the next few weeks, we're going to be trying to keep up with production of these videos. We're probably going to be talking about how often that is. But uh, anyway, uh, please comment, talk about uh, this discussion down in the, the comments below. Was there anything they missed? Were there, were there, uh, were there any um, combos or um, synergies that we might not have thought of? Um yeah, let's talk. Let's get a discussion going because this is this is fun. This is why we do this, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye.